Good day, everyone, and welcome once again to my channel, Darchi Wagas. And if you have not yet subscribed to my channel, please subscribe to my channel, Darchi Wagas, and hit the notification button so that you will be notified of my future videos. Today, I will have a part two of our lecture in Criminal Law 1 for Criminology students, and we are now on Article 3, Felonies. So let's start. So, unsa may naa sa Article 3 of your Revised Penal Code, it is stated there that acts and omissions punishable by law are felonies. So, when we talk about felonies, these are committed not only by means of deceit, but also by means of fault. So, there is a deceit when the act is performed with deliberate intent and there is fault when the wrongful act results from imprudence, negligence, lack of foresight, or lack of skill. So, when we talk about felonies, remember nga acts and omissions ni siya punishable by the revised penal code. Okay, acts and omissions punishable by the revised penal code are called felonies. Why is it important to remember this? Because in your board exam later, you might be asked, no, mohana um, question, these are acts or omissions punishable by the revised penal code. So, pwede dito, A, crimes, B, felonies, or C, dolo, D, culpa. So, you have to be mindful of the terms provided for by the law, okay? So, nai elements ang felonies. Nung sa may mga elements of felonies in general. So, according to um, Reyes, there must be an act or omission. Nung sa manang act or omission, when we talk about act, this is a bodily movement tending to produce some effect in the external uh, world. Okay? By act, it means nga na ay paglihok okay unya ang effect ana adto sa external world okay it being unnecessary that the same be actually produced as the possibility of its production is sufficient okay but remember that the act must be done which is defined by the revised penal code as constituting a felony or at least an overt act of that felony that is an external act which has direct connection with the felony intended to be committed. Okay, bisan pag ni perform kadi hag bodily movement, if it is not an act which is punishable under the revised penal code, you will not be penalized, of course. Okay, so first element, so there must be an act or omission. Ano man ang omission? When we talk about omission, these are uh, inactions, okay, or the failure to perform a positive duty which one is obliged by law to do, okay? So, also remember that there must be a law requiring the doing or performance of an act, okay? Going back, an act, act that is a bodily movement tending to produce some effect in the external world. Example, si A, gikuha niya ang, or gikawat niya ang relo ni B, okay? With intent to gain and without consent of B. Ang act of taking ni A sa rilo ni B with intent to gain constitutes a crime of theft. So that's an example of act. Okay? Now, when we talk about omission, kung mayon ka o omission, yun sa to? Failure to perform a positive duty which one is obliged by law to do. So under sa balaod, you are obliged to do something but you did not do it. That's omission. Okay? Kung sa mga mga example aning omission, Kanang panalitan, uh, you fail to render assistance to any person whom you find in an inhabited place, wounded or in danger of dying. Okay? So, kita ka diha o himat yun in a desert, in Tahai, and then you did not help that person. That is abandonment of person in danger under Article 275, Paragraph 1 of the Revised Penal Code. And you will be liable because of your omission, because of your failure to do a positive duty, which you are obliged by law to do, okay? Another example of an omission is when an officer entrusted with collection of taxes who voluntarily fails to issue a receipt 
as provided by law is guilty of illegal exaction. Okay? So, kana, that's also an omission. Also, another thing is um, that one provided in Article 116, misprision of treason, wherein every person owing allegiance to the Philippines without being a foreigner and having knowledge of any conspiracy against the government who does not disclose and make known the same to the proper authority, you will be held liable for misprision of treason. All right? Also note that ang um, kaning mga felonies by omission, akong giingon ganiha, there should be a law requiring a certain act to be performed and the person required to do the act fails to perform it. Okay? Kay kung walay balaod nga mo penalize nimo for your omission, you will not be held liable under the revised penal code. Okay? The second element is that maototonggiingon it must be punishable by the revised penal code on sa may basihan na to ani because niingon mismo ang ato ang uh, balaod no nga there is no crime when there is no law punishing it you remember that katong nulo magkrimen no la puena senilige you also take note of the latin terms okay nulo crimen no la puena Senelege, because this might also come out in your board exams. Okay? Also note that the phrase punishable by law should be understood to mean punishable by the revised penal code and not by a special law. Okay? That is to say that the term felony means acts and emissions punishable by the revised penal code. And you have to distinguish it from the words crime and offense, which are applied to infractions of law punished by special statutes. So you have to take note of the terms. Okay, moto kung yung ganiha, this might come out in your board exam and you might be asked a question. You will be given a definition and you might be asked to choose among the choices below. No, mo ingon ba felonies, crimes, infractions, and so on and so forth. Okay? And the third is, it is committed by means of dolo or culpa. Okay? Unsa man nang um dulo or culpa we will we will um find that out in this slide so there are uh certain emissions we've discussed this mga examples of the certain emissions no katong ang giingon nimo nga misprision of treason abandonment of persons in danger illegal exactions also this one failure of accountable officer to render accounts failure of a responsible public officer to render accounts before leaving the country Failure to make delivery of public funds or property. Kanang under so rule 130 on privilege communication rule. Okay. Now let's proceed to the classification of felonies according to the means that they are committed. Because the we mentioned earlier that the third element of a felony is that it is performed or the act is performed or the omission incurred is by means of a dolo or by a culpa. Now, unsa man bi ay classification of felonies? Duha na siya, do na tay gitawag nga intentional felonies o culpable felonies. Okay? Intentional felonies and culpable felonies. So remember, ang second paragraph atong Article 3 nagingon nga felonies are committed not only by means of deceit or dolo but also by means of culpa. Okay? Culpa. Now, unsa maning how do we distinguish intentional felonies from that of culpable felonies? Kung maingon ka og intentional felonies, the act or emission of the offender here is malicious. Okay? Malicious na. Sa language pa lang daan sa Article 3, ang giingon na diri nga the act is performed with deliberate intent, meaning with malice. Okay? Ang offender sa pag-perform niya sa act or sa pag-incur niya sa omission, already had the intention to cause an injury to another. Okay? Doon na nag-it siya tuyo nga mo cause o injury anang tawhana nga iyahang gi-violate. Okay? On the other hand, kaning culpable felonies, ang act or omission here of the offender is not malicious. Meaning, what niya gituyo? Okay? The injury caused by the offender to another person is unintentional. And it is simply the incident of another act performed without malice. Okay? So as stated in Article 3, the wrongful act here results from imprudence, 
negligence, lack of foresight, or lack of skill. Okay? Sa intentional felonies, the the wrongful act done results from malice. Okay? But in culpable felonies, the wrongful act done results from so to, imprudence, negligence, lack of foresight, or lack of skill. Okay? Unsa maning uh, word nga deceit akong balikon kung moingon kag word nga deceit mao na ang gihimong translation sa balao the word dulo okay dulos when we talk about dulos it is equivalent to malice which is the intent to do an injury to another okay remember that when the offender in performing an act or in incurring an omission has the intention to do an injury to the person the property, or the right of another. And such offender acts with malice. Okay? If the act or omission is punished by the revised penal code, he is liable for intentional felony. Okay? Intentional felony. Most, remember, most of the felonies defined and penalized in Book 2 of the revised penal code are committed by means of dulo or with malice. And, there are few felonies committed by means of fault or culpa. Alright? Ang kaning Article 217, which actually punishes malversation through negligence. That's an example of a felony committed by means of culpa. Article 224 punishes evasion through negligence. That's another example of a felony committed by means of fault or culpa. Article 365, which punishes acts by imprudence or negligence, which, had they been intentional, would constitute grave, less grave, or light felonies. Okay? There are crimes, however, which cannot be committed through imprudence or negligence. Naagay mga krimen, nga di ka pwedeng maingon, nga aksidente raman to, okay? Unsa maning mga krimina, mauning mga murder, treason, robbery, and malicious mischief. When you commit these kinds of crimes, ah, ka na, malicious yun na, intentional yun na. Because makita ninyo later on, nga ang mga elements ani nagpakita, nga there's intent. Okay? Murder, there's an intent to kill. In treason, do na kay intent sad to betray your government. Okay? In robbery, you have intent to gain. In malicious mischief, you have the intent to also destroy the property of another. So you have to also take note nga lagi mga krimen which cannot be committed by means of culpa or Fault, okay? Now, in felonies committed by means of dolo or with malice and in felonies committed by uh, means of fault or culpa, the acts or omissions are voluntary. Okay? They are voluntary. This omission does not mean that an involuntary act may constitute a felony. Okay? Uh, Article 3 classifies felony, akong balikon, into that of intentional felonies and culpable felonies. An intentional felony is committed when the act is performed with deliberate intent, which must necessarily be voluntary. On the other hand, in culpable felony, which is committed when the wrongful act results from imprudence, negligence, lack of foresight, or lack of skill, ang kanagihapon nga act is also voluntary. Kaya kung involuntary na, mahimo na ng accident. Okay? The only difference between intentional felonies and culpable felonies is that in the first, sa intentional felony, the offender acts with malice. Okay? Sa culpable, ang offender acts without malice. Okay? The definition of reckless imprudence in Article 365 of your Revised Penal Code nagingon nga ang reckless imprudence consists in voluntarily but without malice doing or failing to do an act from which material damage results. Okay? Now on to the types of Kulpa, di ba? Kaya niyong taganiha, the wrongful act may result from imprudence, uh, negligence. Okay? When we talk about imprudence, this imports a deficiency of action. Okay? Uh, meaning, a person fails to take the necessary precaution to avoid injury or damage. It arises because of one's lack of skill. 
Now, when we talk about negligence, this imports a deficiency of perception. There is a failure to pay proper attention and use diligence in perceiving the injury or damage impending to be caused. It arises because of lack of foresight. Okay? Now, unsa may mga requisites sa dulo? Let's try to find out. Okay? So, in order that an act or emission may be considered as having been performed or incurred with deliberate intent, kaning ang mga requisito must be present. Okay? Una, the criminal intent. There has to be a criminal intent on the part of the offender. Ikaduha, there must be freedom of action in doing the act on the part of the offender. Ikatulo, intelligence. There must be intelligence while doing the act or omitting to do the act. Okay? So, unsa maning uh, intent. Okay? When we talk about intent, intent to commit the act with malice being purely a mental process. Okay? And, gipresume na ni siya. Kung ang presumption anining arise, gikan sa pruweba nga dunay gikumiter nga unlawful act. Okay? So, kung dunay commission of an unlawful act, intent, criminal intent here is already presumed. Okay? Remember that. Now, when we talk about freedom, when a person, remember nga when a person acts without freedom, he is no longer a human being but a tool. Okay? And his liability is as much as that of the knife that wounds or of the torch that sets fire, or of the key that opens the door, or of a ladder that is placed against the wall of a house in committing robbery. Morning, Ingoni, Justice Reyes. Thus, Ningon siya, a person who acts under the compulsion of an irresistible force is exempt from criminal liability. Okay? So, kung moingon ka og freedom, kailangan ang imuhang pagbuhat sa maong butang is you are free from any uncontrollable fear, baron, or irresistible force. Otherwise, you will be exempt from criminal liability. Kung may kag freedom, doon na kay uh, igong kagawasan sa pagbuhat sa maong butang. Okay? Third is intelligence. Okay? Kung why intelligence nga mo determine sa morality of human acts, no crime can actually exist. Okay? Mauna, nga ang kanang mga imbisil or kanang mga insane or mga infant, um, they are considered to be acting without discernment. Kung mabuhat silang usaka butang nga violate, uh, butang nga violating the revised penal code. Okay? And they are considered to have no criminal liability because they act without intelligence. Okay? So, importante ka ayo nga when you commit a crime by means of dolo, these three requisites must be present. There has to be intent, freedom, and intelligence. Okay? Uh, we have mentioned earlier nga ang criminal intent is presumed from the commission of an unlawful act, but not from the proof of the commission of an act which is not unlawful, okay? Timan e ng actus non facet reum nesimen set rea, meaning the act itself does not make a man guilty unless his intention were so, okay? Also remember this Latin maxim, actus mi in vito factus non es mios actus, okay? An act by me against my will is not my act. Alright? Timan e na. So, Ang kaning criminal intent may also be uh, uh, categorized into two, okay? First is the general criminal intent. This is presumed from the mere doing of a wrongful act. So this does not require proof and the burden is upon the wrongdoer to prove that he acted without such criminal intent. The second is the specific criminal intent. Kani, dili ni siya presumed because it is an ingredient or element of a crime like intent to kill in the crimes of attempted or frustrated homicide, parricide, murder, or intent to gain in robbery or 
theft, okay? The prosecution here has the unos probande, okay? Or the burden of proof, okay? Now, let us distinguish intent from motive. When you talk about intent, the purpose is to use a particular means to bring about a desired result, okay? Not a state of mind, not a reason for committing a crime. Mao ng intent. But when we talk about motive, mo ni siya ang morong motivation ba, reason, or the moving power which impels one to act for a definite result, okay? Dayon ang intent, if intentional, a crime cannot be committed without intent. Intent is, is sometimes manifested by the instrument used by the offender. When there is motive in the commission of a crime, it always comes before intent. But it is not an essential element of a crime. Okay? Ang elemento regyud sa krimen is intent, not the motive. Okay? Man ina. And then... Anus aman relevant ang motive, okay? It is relevant when the identity of the accused is in dispute, okay? Naglibog mo, kanduduaan, mungkin sa yun ang accused. The purposes or for purposes of defense, okay? In determining the sanity of the accused, that's also relevant. Also in direct assault, okay? And when, you will know that later on, nga nung... Nga nung importante to know the motive in indirect assault when we go to indirect assault, okay, later on in our discussion. Also, when there are no eyewitnesses and suspicion is likely to fall on a number of suspects. In defense of strangers, also when the evidence is circumstantial or when there are two antagonistic versions of the killing, okay? Kanus aman sa dili necessary ang motive? Kung ang identity is known or there's positive identification or where the accused admits the crime. Okay? Let's now go to um, mistake of fact. Okay? Mistake of fact. Okay? Now, timan e nga wal mo ingunta nga ang ignorance of the law excuses no one from compliance therewith. Ignorance or mistake of fact relieves the accused from criminal liability. Diba? Kabatik naman mo na, oh, ignorance of the law, excuse no one from compliance therewith. But under criminal law, ang mistake of fact, you can be exempt from criminal liability because of mistake of fact. Okay? On some day ng mistake of fact, okay, mistake of fact is actually a misapprehension on the part or misapprehension of fact on the part of the person who caused injury to another. Okay? He is not, however, criminally liable because he did not act with criminal intent. Maunang ato ang kuan nga uh, Latin ano nga ignorance niya, facti excusat. Okay? An honest mistake of fact destroys the presumption of criminal intent which arises upon the commission of a felonious act. Okay? Uh, remember, nga na ay requisito gihapon ang mistake of fact okay and, and when you go to law school ganahan mo mag law school diha uh, ganahan ka imo sag usag u ani okay unang requisito the act done would have been lawful had the facts been as the accused believed them to be okay ang iyang gibuhat nga uh, butang would have been lawful kung iyang pagtuo sakto pa Okay, muna ang basically ang translation. The act done would have been lawful had the facts been as the accused believed them to be. Okay? Ikaduha, the intention of the accused in performing the act is lawful. Okay? The mistake was without fault or carelessness on the part of the accused. Okay? Una kong tanong una. The act done would have been lawful had the facts been as the accused believed them to be. In other words, the act done would not constitute a felony had the facts been as the accused believed them to be. Okay? So, kung ang iyahang nahimong butang, uh, mao pa or sakto pa, or sakto pa sa iyahang pagtuo, niligid mahimong uh, krimen ang iyahang gibuhat. Okay? Um, in the case of U.S. versus Peñalosa, yung na Supreme Court, the accused here believed that she was already of legal age when she contracted the marriage. Okay? 
And had it been, ngang iyang pagtuo were real facts, there would not have been any felony committed. Okay? But even if they were not the real facts, since the accused acted in good faith, um, in this case, ninguna Supreme Court, the accused acted without intent. Okay? And her involvement were in voluntary. All right? Remember nga, in mistake of fact, the act done by the accused would have constituted a justifying, either justifying circumstance or or an, absol an absolutory cause contemplated in Article 247 on Part 2 or an involuntary act. Okay? So, kung mistake of fact, ganina, what did say criminal liability? Okay? There is no criminal liability. Second is the or the intention of the accused in performing the act is lawful, okay? Here, there is error in, or in error in persona or mistake in the identity of a victim, the principle of mistake of fact does not apply. Nga naman, nga naman. Example ha, kani. A wanted to kill B by shooting him with a pistol. Thinking that the person walking in a dark alley was B, A shot the person. It turned out that the person killed was C, the brother of A. So A here had the intention to kill C. So since the act and the, the intention of firing or of A in firing his pistol are unlawful, A cannot properly invoke the principle of mistake of fact in his defense. Nga naman, because... In mistake of fact, the intention of the accused in performing the act is unlawful. Now, if you want to kill somebody else and hit another, that is not a mistake of fact, but only error and persona, and you will still be held liable. Okay? Because the act that you perform is unlawful. Okay? Dili lawful ay mong gibuhat nga butang. Because that's the core of mistake of fact. Okay? The third is... The mistake of fact must be without fault or carelessness on the part of the accused, okay? Uh, there has to be an innocent mistake of fact without any fault or carelessness on the part of the accused because having no time or opportunity to make any further inquiry and being pressed by circumstances to act immediately, in the case of Achong, Achong, kung nakaremember mo, the accused has no alternative but to take the facts as they then appeared to him and such facts justified his act of killing the deceased. Okay? So, um, timan eh, nga dapat, wala kay fault, wala ka nagdinanghag when you perform the act in order to successfully interpose the defense of mistake of fact. Okay? Timan ina. So, balik ko na to, ha, nga ang requisites of mistake of fact na act of done or the act done would have been lawful had the facts been as the accused believed them to be. The intention of the accused in performing the act is lawful. The mistake was without fault or carelessness on the part of the accused, okay? And remember also the definition of mistake of fact. And it's also good to also read the case of people versus Achong in order to have a a thorough and in-depth appreciation of the concept of mistake of fact, okay? And also contrast it with the case of people versus awareness, okay? Okay. Now, let's now go to the requisites of culpa, okay? Requisites of culpa. So, may mga requisites sa culpa. Una, criminal negligence on the part of the offender. The crime was the result of negligence, reckless imprudence, lack of foresight, or lack of skill. Ikaduha, ikaduha <coughs> sorry, freedom of action in doing the act, okay? He did not act under duress, meaning nagyapon siya'y kagawasan nga mubuhat sa iyahang gibuhat nga krimen. Okay? Intelligence on the part of the offender in performing the negligent act. If you can um, see, the only difference here is kaning criminal negligence. Sa katong requisites of dulo, ang imong first element is intent, di ba? Here, ang, ang imong first element is negligence. And it resulted, or the crime resulted from negligence, um, reckless imprudence, lack of foresight, lack of skill. Okay? 
We now go to the distinction between mala and se and mala prohibita. Okay? There is a distinction between crimes which are mala in se or wrongful from their nature. Okay? Wrongful from their nature. So may mga example na ng mala in se, kanang theft, rape, homicide, etc. Okay? And those that are mala prohibita or wrong merely because it is prohibited by a statute. Example ka ng illegal possession of firearms. Okay? So let's see kung no, the distinction. In crimes, uh, mala and se, these are those who serious in effects on society as to call for almost unanimous condemnation of its members. While crimes mala prohibita are violations of mere rules of convenience designed to secure a more orderly regulation of the affairs of the society. Okay? Uh, remember nga in mala and se, ang good faith or lack of criminal intent is a valid defense unless the crime is a result of culpa, okay? And the degree of accomplishment of the crime is taken into consideration in punishing the offender. Thus, naadiri ang attempted, frustrated, consummated stages in the commission of a crime. Now, when there is more than one offender, the degree of participation of each in the commission of the crime is taken into account in imposing the penalty. Mauna, do na po'y principal, accomplice, o accessory. Mauna ang sa mala ense, okay? The term mala ense refers generally to felonies defined and penalized by the revised penal code, okay? When the acts are inherently immoral, ang tawag na mala ense, even if punished by special laws, okay? On the other hand, do na po yung mga crimes in the revised penal code which were originally defined and penalized by special laws. And among them are possession and the use of opium, malversation, brigandage, and libel. Okay? And when we talk about mala prohibita, ang mala prohibita refers generally to acts made criminal by uh, special laws. Okay? And the moral trait of the offender here is not considered. It is enough that the prohibited act be voluntarily done. Okay? And good faith here is not a defense. Pariya anang mo issue ka o check yun na mo bounce. Okay? Imong good faith diha is not a defense. Okay? And the act gives rise to a certain crime only when it is consummated. Okay? Unya, ang kanipong mga mitigating, aggravating circumstances are not taken into account in imposing the penalty because the moral trait of the offender is not considered. And the degree of participation of any offender is also not considered. Okay? So next meeting, we will discuss how criminal liability is incurred and I hope you watch the next episode. Thank you very much. I'm Pink.